welcome to the My Career Conversations Agribusiness session. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Carrie, the Industry Council Lead for Agribusiness, and I am your host today. Uh, My Career Conversations is a great way for schools and companies to get a chance to connect and for the students to learn more about career possibilities that exist in West Michigan. I'm excited to have Mike Edwardson, Simon Cronk, and Matt Green with us today. They're our career guides for today's session. Uh, Just a few things to go over before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentations, please submit them in the Q&A function on your toolbar. Um, If you're watching as a class, go ahead and jot down questions and have your teacher add them in there. Um, At the end of the three presentations today, we'll take a chance to answer your questions. My colleague, Samantha, is here today as a co-moderator. She'll be watching those Q&As as they come through. Um, Surveys will be sent out uh, to your teachers after the session today. If you don't mind, take a few few moments and uh, provide some feedback for us. That's really helpful um, as we go through and and plan things like this for um, for next year. So um, with that, let's get started. Uh, Mike Edwardson is the Farm Program Manager at Plainsong Farm in Rockford. Uh, Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Gary. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, thank you. If, if you could uh, just get, get us started today, share a quick overview of what Plainsong Farm is, um, the kind of agriculture work that you do there, and how you became a farm program manager. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Plainsong Farm started back in 2015, and it is a nonprofit educational farm. So by that, uh, We work with a lot of community partners and organizations throughout the community to get them health and fresh produce. So all of the food that we grow at Plainsong Farm um, is donated and it's to provide more access to those in need throughout our community. Um, The specific type of farming and agriculture that we do is more um, farmer's market, uh, fresh produce, and it's smaller scaled. So if you think of like the size of a football field, that's kind of like the size of the growing area. So we are a smaller size farm um, and we're growing everything that you would find maybe at a farmer's market or in the produce section at a grocery store. So everything from tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and all of those things. So with that, all the food that we grow, like I said, is donated, but the farm also serves to support programming throughout the community. So we do a lot of farm-based education, service learning experiences, and we have a robust volunteer program. So the farm acts as like a living laboratory for students through, um, throughout uh, schools in the area to come and learn about how food is grown, where their food you know, comes from, different things about soil health and watersheds and all of those things. So the farm both serves to bring healthy food um, to our those in need throughout our community and also um, serves as a context for programming um, and different things to happen for students and organizations and people throughout our community. So when you were in high school, um, were you thinking I'm going to be a farmer when, when I'm done here or did you have a, a different career path in mind? Yeah, not at all. I don't think what I'm doing now, um, I thought I was going to be doing in high school. To be honest, I really didn't know what I was gonna be doing in high school. I don't think I took advantages of opportunities like this, nor if I knew about opportunities like this. Um, I just knew maybe I should go to college. Maybe that's a good thing to do the next step, but I had no idea I'd be involved in farming and agriculture, uh, mainly because I didn't have any background with it. I didn't come from a farming family. Um, You know, my mother grew, you know, flowers and vegetables and things like that, but I didn't grow up on a farm and that wasn't, like a career path for me. Um, So I would say what I'm doing now is um, not something I uh, expected to do, but it also wasn't out of the realm of possibility just because probably the the idea of what I thought someone to be a farmer or working in agriculture would do um, is a little bit different maybe than what I'm doing currently. Okay, so what did you, you went to college, what degree did you pursue there? Yeah, and in college, I went for youth ministry and biblical studies. So I went kind of to the, the religious uh, side of it, um, more involved in that educational piece. So I enjoy working with, you know, students and people 
and just being able to teach and learn. So that piece kind of translated over where that's a lot of what I still get to do today of working with students as well as people throughout the community, teaching them about the different aspects of small scale sustainable farming, um, soil health, watershed health, where food comes from, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, so what's a typical day like at the farm for you? You, you get up at 8 a.m., you clock in, you're done at 4.30 type of a deal or a little bit different than that? It's a little bit different than that. Um, I think anyone working in farming, agriculture, there's a, there's a large degree of flexibility with the job, but you are more dependent on forces outside of that nine to five. Um, so like today it's raining, so it's a little bit harder to do certain things out in the field with conditions. Uh, I would say uh, early mornings can be a big part of it, especially early on in my uh, career at Plainsong. Um, late nights, depending, um, some weekend work, if you have to go over to the greenhouse and get things watered and kind of tend to things. Uh, the work is very seasonal. So I would say right now, we're trying to plant a lot of things out into the fields. So the work is a little bit more intense and the days can be a little bit longer. Um, I will say for Plainsong specifically, as the years go on, uh, the hours do become a little bit more normal where I can start my day more at like 8 a.m. and be done by five with a little bit of, you know, having to do some work outside of that. Um, but I will say for anyone in farming, it is seasonal where the spring, summer and fall can be pretty intense and pretty heavy in terms of the hours you need to put in um, just because you do have shorter windows to get some of that work done. To even translate it to another field, it's almost like if you were um, working as an accountant or doing taxes, like there's a certain season when that's going to be a little bit more intense where you have to get all those things done. For farmers in the spring and the fall when they're planting or trying to harvest, sometimes you do have to put in the extra hours just to get the work and the tasks done. Um, what, uh, what are some of the myths about being a, a farmer, you know, things that you see on TV that might, um, lead somebody to think one thing about your occupation that really, as you've, as you've been doing this for a few years now, you've realized it maybe isn't the, quite the same way as it's presented. Yeah. When I thought about this question, I was like, well, what is a, what would a, my job look like on TV? Um, I guess if you've seen, and I know this showed up in like different Super Bowl commercials and things like that, but maybe the stereotypical like farmer, it's probably like a truck commercial trying to showcase, you know, a certain like Ford or Chevy truck uh, out in the field with all of like the grain or the corn growing and things like that. And there's this emphasis on like taking pride in hard work and, you know, stewarding the land. And I think all those things are true. Um, I think what what I found is that uh, farming and agriculture, that sector is so much bigger than what you think it is. I think a lot of people, when they think of farming, they think, oh, it's like, okay, I'm going to be out there maybe jumping on the tractor and planting things and harvesting things with the combine. And it's, it's pretty, you know, couched into that specific type of job where I would say when you work in farming and agriculture, like the sky's the limit. There's so much out there because um, you're working with food. Um, and food products. And even here in Michigan, I think that's like the one, the second biggest sector. Um, so there's just so much to do. And to give my example at Plainsong, I do a lot with education. So I work a lot with students. I put on a lot of like workshops. We go to a lot of conferences, things like that. So people interested more in like teaching or even community development or social work and things like that, but also enjoy being outside and growing good food and making that accessible to folks in their community. Um, you know, farming and agriculture is a very viable path to take um, to meet those ends. So I think that's the biggest thing. It's not just the typical like straw hat on a tractor in fields. Um, there's a lot of different things you can be doing um, and a lot of different skill sets and talents that you can bring to this type of career. You, you are spot on um, agriculture, agribusiness. When we look at the, the whole farm to, to plate aspect is the second largest industry um, in the state of Michigan. In, in West Michigan, we have about 26,000 people working in this industry. So it's, it's everywhere. It's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. So um, day to day, what are, what are the types of things that you like most about your job? Um, and maybe flip side of that, you know, the things that you like least about it, what, um, you know, where, where are you finding joy 
in what you do? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for me is, is the variety of work and even the challenge of it. Um, I both enjoy like being able to, to sit down and really like think through like what the plan is going to be, all the different logistics and, you know, management that needs to happen on the farm side, but then you also get to implement that as well. So there is that piece of putting in that hard work of researching what you need to do and putting a plan together, but then being able to go outside and work, you know, in the sunshine, um, it's kind of nice. So there's a lot of flexibility there. I say like, you don't feel like you're stuck like at a desk all day, you get to do a little bit of back and forth. Um, and you're constantly learning um, each and every season and each and every year, there's always new things to learn. Um, so I like that variety. Uh, the job is very dynamic on that front. Um, I would say some of the cons of it is there's a physicality to the work that um, is just, it can be hard. And you do have to be careful with it as the years go on of just how much you kind of like, you know, just put your body to the, to the shovel or to the whatever you're working on. Um, so that's something, you know, when you're younger, you don't think about it, but as the years go on, like it is much more of a physical job, at least some of the work that I do. So that does become tiresome um, after a while. Um, but it is kind of that, like that balance where you do get the joy of being able to, to work outside and have flexibility and do a job that's a little bit more dynamic. Um, but it is something that it, it can be hard work at times. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, if there's students here today that are thinking, you know, of, of going into a career in, in farming and agriculture, um, are there, you know, any, you know, top three pointers, you know, tips, advice, things that you would um, suggest to them that as they look into this career pathway, that they explore um, things that they, they should focus on as they, as they consider this as a career? Yeah, I think my advice would be to think outside the box a little bit. I think when people think of farming and agriculture, uh, if you were to go to school or um, get education or do an apprenticeship or something, they really think about like, I need to go and work on a farm or I need to get some type of environmental or horticultural education. Um, but think outside the box of even like a small scale farm, it's like a small business. Um, there are other aspects to it that are really important. And one of those is like, business. Um, so if you're interested in like small scale farming or agriculture, I would say it, it might be helpful to take like some business classes or even get, you know, minor degree or things like that. So you kind of know the ins and outs of like what it's going to take to run a successful business. Um, and then also with that, you know, using myself as an, an example, things like education, um, thinking about all those other skill sets and resources you might want to bring to the table with farming and agriculture. So maybe getting a degree in education could be helpful because there's a lot of different schools or opportunities for farming and education to take place. It's just in a, you know, educational context. Um, so I would, I would think through some of those other things that might help support these careers. Um, in, in gaining some of those skill sets, because I think those can bring you a long way in this industry. All right, thank you very much. Um, you know, speaking of skill sets, just, you know, is there, a, is there a soft skill that you end up using, you know, more, you know, farming, you're obviously, you need to know the plants, the, the seasons, you know, all of those more technical things. Is there a soft skill that you lean on in, in what you're doing? Communication. Um, I would say being able to work with people is very important because, I mean, depending, there's a lot of different ways to farm, um, but if you're face to face with people in any capacity, you either need to be able to sell your, you know, what you're doing, your product, or just be able to network with people effectively. Uh, that's very important. I mean, one thing I found here is just community networking is vitally important. Um, so be able to have conversations with people. Um, and have those communication skills. I think it will work in any you know, sector and industry you go in, but sometimes it's missed in farming and agriculture. People think, I'm just gonna be in the fields, I don't need to talk with people. And then they find out like, oh, I need to talk with people. <laughs> so um, I think that's something that, that can, you know, you'd never go wrong with trying to develop those communication skills. Excellent. 
thank you so much, Mike. Um, again, if you have questions for Mike, please add those in the Q&A function. Uh, we will make sure we get to them at the end of the session. Uh, but at this time, we are going to move on to talking to Matt Green. He is with Spartan Nash and is a talent acquisition consultant. Uh, he's going to be sharing some information with us today about store director roles in the Spartan Nash um, company. And uh, welcome today, Matt. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, ask Mike, I'll ask you as well. Can you share a quick overview of um, what Spartan Nash is, the company, um, how you came to be in your role there, and, and how Spartan Nash really relates to agribusiness? Yeah, so Spartan Nash is a little bit more than people typically think about. Uh, typically, you know, in West Michigan, we hear about Spartan Nash, thinking grocery stores. Uh, so being a Fortune 400 company, there is so much more that they do. Uh, there's distribution services spread out all across the country, a lot of logistics programs, uh, you know, kind of feed into Spartan Nash. Uh, we have a military distribution facility uh, that does uh, commissaries all across the country, as well as uh, I believe it's 52 other countries. Uh, so serving military bases all across the world. And then we also have, uh, you know, our big corporate center and Byron Center. A lot of uh, support systems there, you know, accounting, finance, uh, all that fun stuff that corporate does. Uh, so it's much, much more than just the grocery stores. We even have independent grocers across the country that we provide services and goods to as well. So, you know, Spartan branded goods in their stores as far away as, you know, Washington, California, Florida, um, and then also providing some of those services as far as accounting, POS systems. Um, and then uh, merchandising services as well. So a lot more than just, you know, your typical grocery store down the street. Um, so how I came to Spartan Nash, uh, I'm actually pretty new. Uh, I've been there about a month and a half as a talent acquisition coordinator. I started off in retail, uh, worked my way up to store director of a Walgreens. Uh, did that for about 10 years. Really focused on the talent acquisition aspect of it, the hiring and training pieces uh, that you know store directors are asked to do on a daily basis, and then uh, kind of made the pivot uh, to do the TA full time. So, brought me here to to learn all about Spartan Nash and uh, you know do these fun events like this. Yeah. Um. So when you were in high school, probably store being a store director wasn't <laughs> on your right. Like when people ask what you're going to be when you grow up. Um, you probably weren't answering store director. So what, what were you thinking about for a career? And is this really what you expected to be doing at this point? Uh, yeah, so definitely was not thinking, you know, spend my life in retail uh, and then work my way to human resources. You know, it's kind of something I fell into, human resources. Uh, you know, in high school, I had all sorts of ideas. I had a million different things that I wanted to do. I was going to go into the Marines at one point. I was going to be an architect, but wasn't great at drawing. Um, you know, just a bunch of different ideas of what I wanted to do, uh, but nothing that I was really set on. Uh, it was really, you know, working through retail. I went to college, uh, haven't used my degree since. So uh, really just, you know, finding what I wanted to do within the retail sector and focusing on those things, learning as much as I could and really honing my skills uh, is what, you know, got me where I am today. Got it. So skills, um, what sort of skills and education are, are required for a, a store director in a retail in a retail setting? Yeah, great question. So it's not so much more, it, in the past it used to be really about education. You know, you required to have a bachelor's degree or at least an associate's degree to, to be a store director. We're really moving away from that and it's more focused on the skills and the experience. You know, what does a candidate bring to the table as far as people development? Uh, what are they looking at as far as, you know, building engaging teams, how they interact with people on a daily basis. So it's really those interpersonal skills uh, that set people apart for being successful store directors or even just leadership in general. Uh, you know, how can you get buy-in from your team? How are you going to communicate the goals with them and follow up to make sure they're on the same page? Uh, so really, really kind of on those soft skills, uh, those interpersonal skills, the communication piece, and just, you know, being engaging, being open-minded and being available to your team. Um, so typical day to day then for a store director, um, you know, retail stores, I, I know um, the family fair in, in my neighborhood had been open 24 seven prior to the pandemic. I think hours have shifted a little bit right now. But you know, what is the what is the typical day in the life of a store director look like? Yeah, um, 
kind of the good thing about your retail right now is there's not really a typical day to day. There's just certain processes that have to happen on a daily basis, but um, no day is going to be the same as the previous day. Um, obviously, there's a lot of you know business related calls, a lot of you know looking at your metrics, your profit and loss, um, but there's a big focus, especially in Spartan Nash right now, on those people development skills. You know, working side by side with your team, no matter what level they are in the company, it could be an entry level cashier, you know, working with them, ensuring that they are uh, prepared in their role and then they are, um, you know, set up with, for success, really. So it's a lot of, you know, seven to five for store directors and assistant store directors, um, typically Monday through Friday, and then it rotates with, you know, every other weekend working. And really, you know, you come in, you start checking what, what was done the previous day or what wasn't done. What do we still need to work on? Uh, setting out a plan for the day based on your sales from the previous day, um, having your know, morning huddles, communicating that information to the team, and then just, you know, diving in, just really working side by side with the employees, you know, whether it's stocking or merchandising, um, you know, doing some signage and marketing within the store and uh, really just, you know, knocking out uh, what needs to be done for the day. Yeah. And then just following up throughout the day too. So you had mentioned, um, you know, there's these, the, the, the vast network of Spartan Nash stores. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got a family fair and, you know, in my, my town and, you know, they're, they're in a lot of different places around West Michigan. Um, the store director role, how much support are they getting from the greater corporation? Um, is it, is it pretty autonomous? Is there a lot of um, networking that's going on, you know, among the stores to, to talk through what's working and what's not working? Yeah, there is, you know, there's a degree of autonomy. Uh, you know, it's kind of each store director treats their store as it's their own personal business, right? So uh, they all have district managers that they report to. There's typically 12 to 15 stores per district. Uh, we've got 11 throughout our company. And uh, the district manager, you know, ensures that all the processes and policies and strategies are in place that they're being followed. So yes, there's a degree of autonomy with how the day-to-day -day operation is run, but there's also uh, some good oversight as far as making sure everybody's on the same page. It's fair and consistent across the board. And then they have weekly conference calls, weekly meetings, uh, where all the stores are getting together and sharing ideas. And, you know, something I've found in retail is uh, the most successful stores, the most successful leaders really are open to communication and open to improving. Uh, so they're constantly contacting and constantly uh, working with their peers, you know, no matter how far away they are, uh, getting ideas, hey, what's working for you? I'm, you know, I'm struggling with this. Uh, how can we help each other improve? And uh, really just that cooperative nature with them. That's you know, another key aspect of being a, a retail leader. Uh, really working together. Uh, and then the company, you know, being in Grand Rapids, uh, they're very, very involved with walks. Uh, our, our CEO, Tony, is uh, known for dropping into stores and just visiting and, you know, seeing how things are going. Um, not doing a big formal walk, but uh, just, you know, trying to get the pulse of the store. You know, what's the day-to-day -day like here? You've got a lot of, lot of autonomy, but there's a lot of support behind it then. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, what's your perception of, of the job outlook for this career um, with, um, boy, with the pandemic, it seemed like a lot of <laughs> online shopping, you know, I, I can't, you know, drive anywhere without seeing piles of boxes that have been delivered to people's houses. Yeah. There, you know, are there some shifts that are taking place or is there a, you know, a big demand for store directors um, now and in the future? Yeah, you know, I think the pandemic, the great thing that it did for, you know, the grocery industry or, you know, food to table uh, was really showed how necessary it is and vital it is, you know, everybody needs to eat. So uh, the outlook for store directors and retail leadership within this sector is, is great. Uh, you know, it's not an industry that's going to go away. Um, there might be competition for talent, but uh, there's a lot of people who down the pipeline are going to be retiring or, you know, moving on to different things such as myself, you know, I moved into to human resources, taking on a more corporate role. Um, there's always going to be a demand. And I think that demand is going to continue to grow over the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. Sure. Uh, so, you know, you, you mentioned you moved in to, you know, when you get to the store director role at a, at a place like Spartan Nash, that's not the, that's not the ceiling for you. There is still, room to grow and, and expand in your career after that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's 
the typical roles through retail, you know, becoming a district manager, uh, you know, regional vice president, that sort of stuff. Um, but at Spartan Nash, we really like to look at it, not just the ladder approach, but the lattice. Uh, there's all these different roles that you can move into, whether it's in corporate or in pharmacy operations. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities. It's, it's really interesting to see how you know, store directors and assistant store directors can go really easily into corporate roles, you know, being category managers or buyers or going working or distribution centers and uh, in, in, lead, in leadership roles um, or, you know, going to talent acquisition or HR. Uh, it's a great feeder pool uh, for some of those, you know, higher level corporate roles or entry level roles at corporate too. Um, yeah, it's not just, you know, you're going to be stuck in retail. There's a lot of opportunity. And we're lucky that the, the corporate is, is located right here in West Michigan. So yeah. there are, there's a, a lot of opportunities, um, you know, to, to look at corporate, um, you know, retail grocery from the corporate side. And so, yeah, um, if, if there are students that are considering a, a career in, um, in retail and, and some of them may be, may be family fair employees right now working at the, the retail level, um, what advice would you give to people considering a career path similar to yours? You know, I would say just learn as much as possible, just having that uh, growth mindset, um, no matter what role you, you know, take on, whether it's, you know, an entry level part time cashier um, or, you know, something higher up, you know, even baristas at you know, some of our Starbucks locations. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for growth and those who are focused on personal uh, growth, as well as the growth of their team members, uh, the people that they work with, um, they're the ones who are going to be the most successful. So being able to build an engaging atmosphere and then just constantly learning, uh, those are the things that really get people far in retail. Lifelong learning is important, I think, in pretty much every role that you could ever go into. So thank yep. you so much, Matt, for, yep. um, you know, for, for jumping into this new in your role and, and being willing <laughs> to, to share your experiences that got you thus far and you know you're 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 got a lot lot of room to keep growing there at Spartan Nash. So we appreciate you. We appreciate you taking the time today to be here. Um, any questions for Matt, make sure you add those to the QA function. Um, and then we are going to talk to Simon Kronk. He is with the um, Muskegon Area Conservation District. It looks like maybe also the Nuego Area Conservation District. He's a MEEP technician. Am I saying that right, Simon? Yes. Hello. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, um, thank I you. will elaborate uh, a little bit further on uh, acronyms that uh, consume my industry. Um, I will try to keep them light, but uh, my name is Simon Cronk. I serve Nuego and Muskegon County Conservation Districts. Um, we're a not-for-profit organization, um, serve as public uh, public servants, if you will, um, that um, are where the main source for natural resource um, information and um, connection for soil health, forestry, um, the federal farm bill dollars, farm service agency, um, many, many roles in conservation um, come out or start here at conservation districts. So the hat that I wear on the daily basis is um, MEEP. Uh, the, the program is called MEEP um, and it's Michigan Agricultural Environmental Assurance Program. Um, and I'm not sure if folks out there know what the MEEP standardized testing used to be um, in elementary. Um, here, I think it's changed its name, but uh, it is, I have to live with this acronym still. So, um, it's a program focused on commending stewardship on the farm and promoting best management practices uh, for soil health, watershed water quality, um, safe herbicide, pesticide storage, fuels, um, and irrigation uh, monitoring and um, recording um, and just overall best management on the farm. So um, it's a good neighbor, good neighbor program. It's a voluntary program um, and it kind of promotes um, sustainable agriculture uh, throughout the state. And there is 40, 42 of us um, and some serving uh, multiple counties, some serving individual counties, but every, every conservation district has a meat technician. So, okay. Yeah. 
And so how did you come to be in your role? Were you, you know, was this on your radar and, you know, before you got out of high school? It was not. Um, as echoed earlier, I think I had a lot of ideas for what I wanted to do out of high school, um, but I had no plan or um, solid set goal. So um, originally I went into plastics engineering <clears throat> based on friends and family who said it was a great career, ton of job opportunity. I realized within one semester that that was not the environment I wanted to be. And I, I leaned back, I took a step back and it was a hard time. And I, I've always loved the natural world and loved growing plants um, and have had a garden for, for all my life. And um, so I said, I'm going to go um, into environmental biology. And um, it was very, very strenuous into, you know, pretty hardcore science and organic chemistry and physics and the full full suite of science and it was eye-opening um, and challenging but um, shortly after um, graduating I, I, I finished that degree I found um, I love a forestry um, so I went into forestry um, and worked up in the UP for a couple of years um, got back home got involved with um, the board of directors here. I was just looking for more um, boots on the ground, community engagement, and um, try to instill some new, new concepts and new passion um, to our local conservation district. And upon joining the board as just a volunteer, um, a job opportunity opened up here um, in sustainable agriculture, and I was on board for it. So <laughs> here I am. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so lots of, you know, lots of overlap there, though, that, you know, there's lots of paths into the job um, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, you, you were able to find. <laughs> Ab absolutely. I think anything in natural resources all starts from getting into the field. And I think if there's one one piece of advice I would share um, that I didn't pursue enough post high school or even during college was those summer seasonal jobs. Um, Mike Edwardson over there, go work on a farm for the summer, go out, um, go find. Um, there's some of the best jobs, you meet some of the best people, um, get in the field. Um, I, I learned my path and and what interested me in my career from getting out there um and it can be grueling um you know weather inclement weather to long hours time away you know living in bunk houses um it's all extremely rewarding um when you look back on it so i i always am in favor of looking for field jobs um to in you know in promote and develop your work ethic and, and networking so absolutely so your day-to-day -day, what do you what do you most enjoy about being in this role is there you know things that you just absolutely on the days you know that those are coming up on the schedule that's that's the days that you're really looking forward to yep um getting in the field um and that and and more so in the field being going out into the forest um consulting with uh, landowners in the counties um, about forest health, um, silviculture, which is um, practice of of grooming or har sustainably harvesting uh, the forest and their their land properly managing their land. And I think when folks want to learn how to, how they can better their their property, um, it's it's amazing. I get to share my knowledge and my experience with, with somebody who's really wanting to learn and it's an honor. Um, so those, the, the consultations that I get to, to share and get invited out to pr some pretty cool properties throughout um, Nuego and Muskegon counties and share about sustainable agriculture or 
do soil sampling and talk about nutrients and, and deficiencies or ways to naturally um, build their soils um, and then promote a diverse, diverse amount of programs that have cost incentive to them that they could enroll in to help um, help better their property and offset costs to manage for um, what they what they would like. And, and on the flip side of that coin, are there things that you know you do because they're part of the job and you have to do them, but it's just not it's not your sweet spot. But but you know you got to get it done. Yeah, um, I would say scheduling. Um, ultimately, when when I have to you know, communicate and try to coordinate meetings or verifications for the MEAP program. There's a lot of parties involved and we have to get on the same page and it can be difficult um, and a bit frustrating when, when there are scheduling conflicts and we can't, you know, things take, take longer than I would like them um, to happen and, and get done. So it's kind of, exercising some patience and you know reassuring yourself that this is going to get done and we're this is the best interest for for the land and um yeah so yeah um i i if, i don't know i you had mentioned you might have some photos that you wanted to share i want to give you yeah. a chance to do that as well um just yeah to kind i think of give a, a visual idea of what it is that you're talking about sure sure yeah there are many i wear many hats at the conservation district you know we're a the first contact for you know my lawn's dying or going to an orchard and talking about you know pathogens or or entomology um, and or going out to the forest and talking about spongy moss and um, there's a lot of lot of variants in my days but I think what I really wanted to talk to about today was kind of my path to this. Um, this role. So I'll share my screen with some pictures from the UP and um, field work more so. Okay, that's just my brief introduction. I do apologize. I am going to slide through a few of these um, due to time constraints, but I would just like to share share some photos. Are you able to see my screen? Yep, we sure can. Okay, education. I was at uh, Ferris State Environmental Biology. I did get involved in agriculture um, while I was in college um, and worked in seed corn. Um, I was a planting supervisor in Lakeview. Um, it was an excellent job. Um, it started as an internship and I could do it um, during those summer months while I was out of school. So. Um, not being raised on a farm, there is still opportunities in agriculture if you have the strong communication and willing willingness to work um, and they're excellent careers. So um, skip that. Here's the forestry um, technician job. So I worked with Michigan State right out, out of um, college and it was pure field work, taking immense amount of data, um, you know, timber marking, data entry, measurements. I learned learned forestry, and I think ultimately um, that is that is my passion. Um, and I still get to still get to uh, work in the woods. So here's here's a map of the locations that I was able to travel to during this work, and I lived up in the UP for three years. So. Um, it was pretty amazing um, in the memories and the pictures that I have. Um, those are all the pins and this, this project is still ongoing. So um, there are many job boards out there. I have a list of them I'd love to share and I, I'm always open to um, contact for more information um, because it can be really daunting and difficult um, folks going into biology because um, you know, I think society shares that it's laboratory and, and cellular work um, when oftentimes there's a lot of field field components. Here's some here's some days in the field. Um, 
there's a quad rat, some of our measuring devices, um, pretty, pretty uh, rough, but you know, and we're, we're in it and we're surveying the forest floor, um, identifying all the species and, and size classes. Um, this is a really cool one. This was at one morning we're walking out into the field and these were about five to 10 feet apart from each other, a wolf track and a black bear. So that was, um, we saw quite a few black bears, never saw the wolf, but um, I wear a size 11 and that's a steel toe boot. So they're pretty big. <laughs> um, and of course it was raining, so. This is a pretty, pretty picture. We're looking at regeneration of seedlings um, and we are identifying uh, what's, what's coming back after a logging prescription. This was one um, I really wanted to share. And if you're taking notes, jot these down and, and explore them. Um, Texas A&M Job Board, there is tons of seasonal employment. Um, with very little experience or education needed. Um, oftentimes they're ideal for um, that summer, summers between, between um, college or vocations. Um, and yep, eco log and I can see. Um, and then the NRCS, um, which Natural Resource Conservation Service, they are a, um, federal organization that uh, agency, so to speak, that, that handles with federal farm bill dollars. Um, soil science is huge right now, and there is going to be a huge push for um, employment opportunities in soil science. So um, that, is, that is happening. So, yep. so you mentioned you know, all of these are, are opportunities to get out in the field. Um, and these are opportunities that students could take advantage of. They, you, you would not need to already have a, a degree. There's not a soil science degree that would, or biology, just getting that experience could, could lead to a, a, a long-term career in sustainable agriculture. Yes, it could, exactly. And it did for me, um, you know, the, the soil science and the NRCS route is a more formal and more linear path. Um, so you would need a soil science degree, but um, like the forest, um, Texas A&M job board, there's, there's studies, um, they're all research projects that are going on in fisheries and wildlife, agriculture, forestry. Those are excellent stepping stones in, in building that resume. Um, and they, they carry a lot of merit um, and they have helped me um, find my path and into sustainable agriculture, um, which was kind of a, um, it wasn't expected um, that I would be working for this program, but it's been a really, all of these skills have, have helped me succeed in, in the meat position role. So um, and this is... Yep. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say real quick, just gonna ask you, you've got, um, you said there's 42 conservation districts around the state? Um, there's one in every county, um, technician, um, meat technicians, it's, we've had a high turnover rate lately, so there's opportunity there um, with employment, um, but every county will have a meat technician um, serving it, so I believe there's about 40, 40, 42 of us um, and across a couple in the UP and then um, multiple in some of the more agro, um, you know, the more concentrated agriculture regions um, in the Thumb and in the Southwest, so. There's obviously, it sounds like a lot of opportunities beyond just the meat technician role to, to get involved in supporting this um, you know, in, in the field and, and a lot of other roles. So, yeah. Yeah, um, conservation I, I, districts. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really excited that you had a chance to share because I think all, all three of you have, you know, kind of highlighted things that um, when somebody says agriculture, this isn't necessarily the first thing that they think of is that, you know, farm education or 
right? Um, agribusiness, that farm to plate, thinking of the, the retail and all of the, the, the store director roles and the things that Matt shared. Um, I want to make sure, um, Samantha, I don't know whether any questions have come through on the Q&A for the presenters to, um, to respond to, but I want to make sure we leave time for that if needed. I do not see any. Okay. Um, if there are any questions, we'll, we'll wait for a moment or two um, and, and make sure that we have a chance to address those. Um, but otherwise, I really want to thank the, the three of you for being here today, for sharing this information and, um, and for the work that you, that you do. Um, you know, we all have to eat um, that food. You know, I appreciate that these are all things going on locally. And, um, and you know, I, I enjoy my, my daily meals. And, and I know that you're all a part of making that happen in one way or another. So um, we really do appreciate your time today. If there aren't any questions, I, I think we can um, conclude here. And um, the, you know, there's an opportunity. I think if you'd like to learn more, um, it, you know, wanted a chance to connect with any of these presenters um, directly or have questions for them offline, um, please have your teachers reach out to me. And I think I'm able to pass some of those connections along um, that you could maybe do a, a job shadow day, visit, you know, visit one of these presenters and learn more um, directly from them about, about some of these roles. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, have thank a wonderful you. day today.